Hi, I'm Stacey and welcome to my book nook and welcome to today's video which will be, as promised, my massive April and May book haul. Um, so May was my birthday month, so I have some gifts, have some presents, and I have ooh, about 20 books that I need to go through, so this this will be interesting. So let's get into it. And the first thing that I always do, as usual, is go through the digital books that I got. And apologies if you hear any noises. There's like people mowing grass, there's jets going, you might hear my dog barking. We'll see what happens. At the moment I can hear the rumble of a jet. So hopefully you can't hear it. But apologies if you do. So the first one that I bought in April was Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney, and I'll put a picture up here. Uh, this is a thriller, and I don't know loads about it, but I do know that I'm pretty sure Leanne from Literary Diversions recommended it, or at least said about it, which made me want to read it. And I'm pretty sure it follows Daisy Darker as she goes to a family reunion and I'm pretty sure yeah there's some there's a murder and it could have been could be anybody because none of them are good people and that's as far as I know about it I hope that was accurate but it sounds like my cup of tea so that was actually the only digital one in April in May I got a few more um, so the first one that I got in May, oh, was A Million to One, and this is by Adiba Jaigadar, and it is like a historical fiction, and you'll probably see from the cover that it is a, it's set on the Titanic, it's like a heist set on the Titanic with these women, um, and chaos ensues, and I am here for it, and I read some of Adiba Jagadar's writing. Um, what, which one was the one I meant? Oh, I read Honey in Ishu's Guide to Fake Dating. Pretty sure that's what it's called. And I enjoyed that. So I'm looking forward to this one. And the next one that I got, they're all thrillers, that's weird, um, was The Death of Mrs. Westaway, and that's by Ruth Ware. And that is another thriller. And this one is about a woman who gets, I think, basically she inherits, I think, maybe some money or a house or something. She gets invited to this house. She's never heard of Mrs. Westaway. And I believe it might have been meant for somebody else, but I'm not quite sure. But she goes to this house thinking okay, I don't care if I'm not the rightful person, I'm going to get this stuff. And uh, it's a thriller. I'm kind of hoping that it might be a bit spooky, but I'm really not sure. But it was recommended to me as a horror, so perhaps. So we'll see how it goes. And the last digital one actually is not a thriller. It's a romance. And that is Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. And this one follows, let's see if I can remember what it's about. I'm pretty sure it follows a fan fiction writer and a, like, the lead in this series that the fan fiction writer writes about. And I think he is a secret fan fiction writer. This could be totally wrong, but something about fan fiction and, oh, actually, I think she's a cosplayer. And he's a secret fan fiction writer. That, that makes more sense. And I think she wins a date with him or something, but that's all I really need to know. It sounds like fun. I think it's meant to be a little bit spicy, if you're into that. Which I'm usually not, so see how that goes too. So. Okay, so that was all the digital ones. 
and now I'm going to go through my birthday things. It's not going to be in any particular order, this video. It's haphazard. We'll see how it goes. But the first one I want to talk about, because I've talked about it a little bit before, is Emily Wells' Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. And this was from my lovely sister. And I'm excited. It's about Emily Wilde and her kind of... She wants to find... What is it? The hidden ones, I believe. Uh, she's a genius scholar and researcher and she's writing the world's first encyclopedia of fairy lore. And she's not good at people. Um, and then there's a new arrival, her dashing and insufferably handsome academic rival, Wendell Bumblebee, and she wants to uncover the secrets of the hidden ones. And I've heard it's kind of cosy fantasy, so obviously, hopefully, I will enjoy this, but it sounds like it's my cup of tea. It's got a little bit of academia in there. Sounds fun. So that's the first one. And the second one that my sister got for me is The Secret Society of Irregular Witches, and this is by Sangu Mandana. Ooh. Sorry, <laughs> um, got distracted by shininess. And this follows a witch, and she responds to an advert, I believe, and it's for a living tutor wanted for three young witches. And it says, must have nerves, nerves of steel, previous teaching experience, not necessary, witchiness essential. So it's kind of teaching young witches. It's reminiscent of House in the Cerulean Sea. Like this cover is definitely meant to emulate that a little bit. And it's, I think they're three orphan witches. So it kind of makes sense that it's a little bit like that. And there's some romance involved. And if it's anything like House in the Cerulean Sea, then I'll probably love it. Um, but I'm quite excited about this one. Let's just read a little bit. As one of the few witches in Britain, Mika Moon has lived her life by three rules. Hide your magic, keep your head down, and stay away from other witches. An orphan raised by strangers from a young age, Mika is good at being alone. And she doesn't mind it, mostly. But then an unexpected message arrives, begging her to travel to the remote and mysterious nowhere house to teach three young witches, and Mika jumps at the chance for a different life. Nowhere house is nothing like she expects, and she's quickly tangled up in the lives and secrets of its quirky, caring inhabitants. And with Jamie, the handsome, prickly librarian, who would do anything to protect his charges, and who sees Mika's arrival as a threat. An irritatingly appealing threat. Um, so, that sounds fun. Handsome librarian, I'm in. And continuing with things that my sister got me, she got me the whole set of the Inkheart series in these gorgeous covers. And I will just show you the covers, because like, this is, this is Inkheart. And I have, I read the series as a, as a, not really a child, like a teenager. Look how beautiful they are. I think Ink Death is my favourite. Like, it's just stunning. And it's by Cornelia Funke. And it follows, I'll just hold it up for you. So this, oh, mind my nails. Don't worry about my nails. Got a to the door, they're fine. Um, so these it follows it follows Maggie and her father. I can't remember his name. But her father can read characters out of books. And it basically the first one at least follows what happens after that and what happens when the wrong people are read out of the books. Um, chaos ensues. And then the next ones 
kind of go into more of the ink world. And I remember them being so much fun. Um, and I really wanted to reread them. Uh, so, so now I have the full set in these gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous covers. I'm very excited. I do kind of have my old ones up here. Vaguely see them. But they were very water damaged. Um, because they'd been in the attic for god knows how long. So they were incredibly water damaged. And I'm not quite sure if I'd be able to read them or not. Um, so I might, I'll just get rid of those now. And keep these gorgeous ones, apparently. Gorgeous ones. And my last birthday book was from my lovely boyfriend, me. And he got me Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. And literally the only thing I know about this is that it's got colour magic and... That's basically all I need to know. Colour magic, it's Brandon Sanderson. I'm in. So let's uh, have a look together. Warbreaker is the story of two sisters who happen to be princesses. The god king one of them has to marry, a lesser god, and an immortal trying to undo the mistakes he made hundreds of years ago. Theirs is a world in which those who die in glory return as gods, a world transformed by biochromatic magic a power based on an essence known as breath, which can only be collected one unit at a time from individual people. But it's worth it. By using breath and drawing upon the colour in everyday objects, all manner of miracles and mischief can be performed. So I really love his magic systems. They're always so interesting. And I'm so excited to see what this has in store. Um, let's go through some special editions next. The first of which is Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. This is the Waterstones edition. It's really, really beautiful. And it also has pretty sprayed edges. Big cool water effect. And this is a sci-fi and it's best if I just read the back because I could not tell you what it's about if I tried. Lives separated by time and space have collided. An exiled Englishman, a writer trapped far from home, and a girl destined to die too young have each glimpsed a world that's not their own. Travelling through the centuries, between colonies on the moon and an ever-changing earth, together their lives will solve a mystery that will, will make you question everything you thought you knew to be true. That's all I need to know. I think it's beautiful. I've heard good things about it too, so... I'm excited. The next one is Cursed Crowns by Catherine Doyle and Catherine Weber. And it's got these absolutely beautiful sprayed edges. This is also a Waterstones edition. And it comes signed. Um, and this is the second in the series. And it's about these two girls. They're twins and they're technically both princesses. Um, one of them was raised by witches and one of them was raised in the castle. And the first book um, sees the one that's raised by witches swap places with the one in the castle. And then there's lots of romance, lots of political intrigue, and I really enjoyed it. So I'm excited to read this one. Um, this is definitely on my TBR for June. So I'm excited. Next one is In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Clune. This is the special edition with pretty edges, and I do believe it is also fine. Um, my sister was lucky enough to go to Comic Con recently and meet TJ Clune, and she has, I think she got some signed editions, um, but apparently she also told him that I was the one that got her, her into his books. So that was quite sweet. Um, yeah, so this. I've read it and I really, really loved it. I loved it so much. It's just as good as the other ones. So there we go. I'll just read you this. 
Um, in a small home built into the branches of a tree live a human named Victor and three robots. These are a pleasantly sadistic nurse machine, a small vacuum desperate for love and attention, and a fatherly inventor android na named Giovanni Lawson. Together, they're a family, hidden and safe. Then Vic salvages an unfamiliar android labelled Hap. He learns that Hap and Geo share a dark past where they hunted humans, and Hap unwittingly gives away Geo's location. Before they know it, robots from Geo's former life arrive to capture and return the android to his old lab in the City of Electric Dreams. Um, yeah, and what follows is a journey across what used to be the US to save Giovanni. And it's a Pinocchio retelling with the robots. I'd say it's kind of sci-fi fantasy. And I loved it. So that's that one. Now, I've got two fairy loot books. I haven't actually shown you this one because I got my puppy and didn't manage to edit the footage of me unboxing my April fairy loot. That might come at some point. We'll see. But the one that was in that box was Silver in the Bone by Alexandra Bracken. And it's this lovely edition. It's got a really pretty edge. And under the dust jacket, it's nice. And this is on the back. And I just want to say that this is uh, an Arthurian not really a retelling, like a reimagining. Um, and I know that this is Tintagel because I've been here, I remember it, and um, this is definitely Tintagel. So that kind of makes me excited. Um, also, I quite enjoyed Law, oh, and it's got this. I enjoyed Law, so I'm looking forward to this. I do love Arthurian stuff. So, let's read it. Amazon Lark is a hollower, breaking into the ancient crypts of dark sorceresses in search of the treasures inside. Now, rumours are swirling about a powerful ring from Arthurian legend, a ring that could free her brother, Cable, from a curse. But they aren't the only ones who cover it. As word spread, greedy hollowers start circling, and many would kill to have the ring for themselves. Hamzin is forced into an alliance with her rival Emrys, the last person she wants to rely on. Together they dive headfirst into a viper's nest of ma dark magic and expose a deadly secret with the power to awaken ghosts of the past and shatter her last hope of saving her brother. That sounds really interesting. So I'm quite excited to read that one. And May's Fairy Loot was Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. It's got this lovely exclusive redesigned cover. It's got a really pretty edge with some letters. And, and it has the most stunning cover. And oh, I just. I just love it. It's so, so beautiful. And the side's very nice too. And as for the end papers, they're really gorgeous too. And of course, it is, it is signed as well. Let's read this one. After centuries of sleep, the gods are boring again. All 18-year-old Iris Winnow wants to do is hold her family together. With a brother forced to fight on behalf of the gods now missing from the front line and a mother drowning her sorrows, Iris's best bet is winning the colum columnist promotion at the Oath Gazette. But when Iris's letters to her brother fall into the wrong hands, those of the handsome but cold Roman Kit, her rival at the paper, an unlikely magical connection forms. 
It's spelled into the middle of a mystical war typewriters in tow. Can their bond withstand the fight for the fate of mankind and, most importantly, love? Um, so I've heard really good things about this. So I'm very excited to read it. It sounds really interesting. Quite different. Fairy loot, as it's like a historical fantasy. But I think it'll be really interesting. Gods and magic and historical fantasy, and I think it'll be fun. Okay, we're on to the last stretch. So, go with this one first. Um, I have Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. I got this from a charity shop for £1. And I haven't read it, and everyone seems to have read it, so I thought, why not? And I'm going to hope for the best. So, this says, Eleanor Oliphant leads a simple life. She wears the same clothes to work every day, eats the same meal deal for lunch every day, and buys the same two bottles of vodka to drink every weekend. And, uh, oh my gosh, Eleanor Oliphant is happy. Nothing is missing from her carefully timetabled existence, except sometimes everything. So I think it'll be quite interesting. I don't know how I'm going to feel about it, but it's it's going to happen at some point. I'm super excited about this one. I, pre I actually pre-ordered the paperback because I just, I liked the hardback, but it was so expensive. So paperback it was. That is The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle. And this one was out of print for ages, and I had been wanting to buy it, and I just could not buy it. And, yeah, I watched the film as a child and loved it, so I'm really excited to read the book. I've heard it, I've heard really good things about this too, so I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping I love it. It says, living in peace in her lilac wood, the unicorn didn't know the world had changed or that anything had happened to the rest of her kind. Overhearing a chance conversation, she resolves to venture out and discover the truth. The road is dangerous, and the risks are great. If she fails, the unicorns will be lost forever. Um, it says, a modern fairy tale, The Last Unicorn is a beloved classic, voted by Time as one of the 100 greatest fantasy novels of all time. I mean, that it must be good then. But it's got a really beautiful cover. I really love it. I'm really excited about reading this. Then we have um, a reading copy. Although I think, to be honest, this looks like a final copy as well. It doesn't have arc on it or anything. It doesn't have a date. And it is out already. So the one I have is The Immortal Games by Annalise Avery, and look at all this foiling. Wow. So this is, it just sounds really fun. Every blood moon signifies the beginning of the Immortal Games. These epic games are played by the gods of Olympus, with randomly selected humans as their tokens. The stakes are high, and survival unlikely. 17-year-old Ara seeks revenge on the gods for allowing her sister to die in the games. She is determined to be selected as a token, but when she is, the odds are weighted against her. As the trials become more brutal, Ara finds her heart tangled up in the game's outcome as well as her life. In the games of life and death, what will Ara sacrifice to win? So... It kind of, it reminds me a little bit of Law by Alexandra Bracken, and but like cross with Hunger Games kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, it sounds fun. I'm excited. Also, this is like, I don't know, it's, it's quite floppy, so I think it'll be fun. Good to read. And then we have... The Three Dahlias by Katie Watson. Um, this was actually last month's Thriller of the Month, Waterstones. So I'm excited. It's quite 
It's really pretty, I like it. And it's really interesting. I'm not reading this because look, look at it. I'm not reading it. I'll just tell you vaguely what it's about. So there are these three actresses who have played Dahlia, um, Dahlia Lively, and they are basically they're teaming up to solve a murder at the stately home of Lettuce Davenport, um, and Dahlia Lively is like a, a detective that was created by Lettuce Davenport. Um, so almost like uh, Lettuce is like Ag Agatha Christie, let's say, and Dahlia Lively is kind of like Miss Marvel. We'll go with that. And then they're invited to her stately home. Um, I can't remember what for. Something about VIP fans. And then these three act actresses kind of band together to solve a murder. And one of them is from the original movies. Uh, one of them was a TV Dahlia for 13 years. And the last one is an ex-child star who is fresh out of rehab and she wants to, well, she will be taking on the role for the new movie. And I just think the dynamic between them will be so interesting. But then they're also solving a murder. It sounds great. I'm in. The last one I have was actually recommended to me by a colleague. A colleague, not a colleague, oh my god, a colleague. And it also won the book prize last year. Um, so this is The Seven Moons of Mali Almeida, and this is by Sheen Karanatalaka. I might have said that completely wrong. That's what I'm going with. So this one is, it sounds really interesting and I'm excited read it and tell my colleague what I think about it. So, this says, Colombo, 1990. Marley Almeida, water photographer, gambler and closet gay, has woken up dead in what seems like a celestial visa office. His dismembered body is sinking in the Bayer Lake and he has no idea who killed him. At a time when scores are settled by death squads, suicide bombers and hired goons, the list of suspects is depressingly long as the ghouls and ghosts who cluster around him can attest. But even in the afterlife, time is running out for Marley. He has seven moves to try to contact the man or woman he loves most and lead them to a hidden cache of photos that will rock Sri Lanka. So it's Sri Lanka in the 1990s. And it just sounds really interesting. So I'm very excited to get to that one. Oh, okay, so that was actually the last one. <laughs> oh, let me know if you're interested in any of these or if you've read them and enjoyed them. Please, please tell me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.